Hello again. It's Miss Magda from the Fordo Branch Library. February may be cold, but there's multiple things to celebrate. From Black History Month to the Chinese New Year to St. Valentine's Day to Mardi Gras and the season of Lent, there is a party around pretty much every corner. But for some, these winter months can be hard. And we just need a reminder that spring is coming and we're going to get through it. Let me tell you a story. Winter had been cold and it seemed impossible that spring would ever come again. The villagers had come through the first half of winter, but they worried if there was enough food for both the people and their animals. What if someone got sick and couldn't work? What if something happened to the animals that provided the milk and the meat? What if they all froze in the cold? What if the men who had gone off to fight in the war beyond the realm never came home? It seemed every year they were always so happy during the Yuletide feast, but their spirits would crash into the frozen ground as the temperatures got colder and the people suffered from backaches, runny noses, and infections. Even the bleak gray skies and the chilly rains seemed to erase any hopeful thought of the growing daylight hours. Especially when that same sun was never warm, only a dim glow in the sky. The villagers missed their husbands, fathers, and sons, and they worried over their safety. Yet Bridget's house was full of light. Her sons were at war too, but she didn't worry. She held hope and faith that they would soon return. They had spent their yuletide in the trenches like the rest, but before she went to bed each night, she stoked the fire higher and left out a plate of food, just in case one of her boys came home in the middle of the night. They were always so hungry, her boys. Ar, Yugar, and Roadan. Yura was taller than both of his older brothers, with fiery red hair and a temper to match. His eyes were an icy blue with a poet's fire that seemed something more than human. Yoka was the most clever by far, surely to be a sleek general or perhaps a healing man by now. His hands had always been gentle, like his heart. Now the eldest, Ruadan, was the strongest of the three with a covering of reddish brown hair all over most of his arms rather than his head which he shaved to show the woad tattoos underneath his skin. He could pound out a sword of strongest steel in a matter of hours, with designs so fine, some needed a magnifying glass to see them. It didn't really matter to Bridget what they did, as long as they were all well and happy. Right now, they were away fighting a battle that had begun before any of them were born, but she kept hope and faith for the safe return of her sons and the warm sun in the sky. One day, she wrapped herself in her thickest shawl and stepped out into the cold. This was the day that the best of the village boys would gather for their yearly outdoor battle. She always enjoyed watching them imitate their her son's strength running back and forth, playing chase, tackling each other in the dirt until the arcane rules declared a victor to the masses. Hours passed as she cheered the athletes on and she barely even noticed the time or the cold. With smiles on their faces, the winning team was hailed with a feast and the few young boys got their first taste of leftover Yuletide whiskey. Bridget's praised each boy in turn, saying her son's smiles and laughter in each young face. All the festivities helped her keep her hope and her faith. And then she noticed a mother standing off to the side with a sad face. She knew that look like she knew her own heart story. The woman's husband and eldest son were off fighting, 
and she could imagine her young son trading in his imaginary war for the real thing soon. Bridget walked over to the mother and she held out her hands and the mother took them. They both walked back to Bridget's home together. Now Bridget's hearth was always warm and clean just in case a lost soul needed it. For the same reason, she left her door cracked, even on the coldest nights. Now, her sons were on their way. She knew that, as well as she knew that her ewes had become their lambing. She warmed a bit of sheep's milk with a bit of honey, and she offered it to her guests. Now, the people say that Bridget's honey was so sweet that it had come from the other world's apple trees. The mother sighed as the comfort of that cup brought her a little bit of peace. And Bridget waited. It's just not fair, Bridget, the mother exclaimed in a choked voice. My, my men, they should be home with me, not fighting giants and monsters far away from home. Not right now, they must, Bridget said gently. We can try to stop the fighting as much as we can prepare for the coldest winter, but sometimes frost and the snow and the monsters, they, they take our loved ones away from us. And the best we can do is remember that spring is coming. <laughs> How can you think about spring when it's so lonely and cold? Bridget, people are sick. People are starving, and the world feels like it's the saddest it could ever be. How could you have any hope and faith in the middle of all that? Bridget smiled sadly, remembering her own sadness. While at the same time, remembering all the things that helped keep her heart open. Well... It's the small things, really. Sometimes the girls will bring me offerings of a song or stories, and I give them lessons on my weaving loom. And we'll spend hours making beautiful things from words and thread. And there's the crocus flowers that I planted right outside my front door. It's like they're fighting their own little war, their stubborn little things. But have you noticed how the little yellow bulbs are just like popping out of the snow and they just keep creeping up until they reach the sun and the birds they keep chirping in the morning they want me want to like whistle and skip around my yard like i'm a young girl or or the groundhog poking her head up out of her hole looking for the first signs of spring those are the little pleasures helping me keep my hope and my faith. The mother sipped her warm milk thoughtfully. She looked at the weaving loom sitting in the corner. She glanced out the door to see the small splashes of yellow color on the ground. She closed her eyes to listen and the birds were indeed singing. She hadn't noticed any of that until this very moment. And she looked at Bridget with tears in her eyes. I know my men won't come home until it's their time. Thank you for reminding me that it will be soon. And it will be hard, but I'll try to remember. So Bridget continued to tend the hearth fires herself, always making sure that at least the embers were burning. Spring was coming. Her sons would return. Despite all the worries, there was always enough for everyone to eat because she fed them. If anyone got sick, she would nurse them back to health. She kept hope and faith for all of them. Q.
keep hope and faith. Celebrate wherever you can. I'm Miss Magda from the Bordeaux Branch Library. See you next time.